Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Extending WP GraphQL Plugin. In the previous episodes, we learned about how to write the GraphQL queries, how to register your custom, how to register the types in GraphQL and how to uh, register the object types as well, right? Uh, in this video, we're going to learn about registering a custom mutation in WP GraphQL, okay? So let's take an example. Now let's say that you're building an add to wish list functionality in WooCommerce. Now you know that when you're working with headless WordPress, add to wish list mutation is not available by default. So we can build one and I'm going to show you what we will build and it's pretty interesting. So if you take a look, you have an option to add new mutation over here and then I can name my mutation. Uh, let's say add to wish list. Okay, so that's my mutation and then I'll remove the and then if you scroll down, you have this add to wishlist mutation. This is something that I have added custom. This wasn't available by default. So if I click on it, you can see that it takes input. So it takes certain piece of information. It takes client mutation ID and it also takes the product ID, right? And in the response, it gives you a bunch of uh, data. For example, whether it's added. So that's yes or no, true or false. Uh, client mutation ID if you want to, uh, any error, uh, product ID, and also all of the wish list product IDs for that particular user. So let's click on that one. And I'm going to just say client mutation ID e equals example. This needs to be a unique ID. For now, I'm just putting example for this demo purposes. And I'm also putting the product uh, ID as 10. Let me just confirm we have the product available with an ID as 10. So I'm going to go on to WooCommerce products. Uh, let's go with 36. I'm, I'm assuming that you've already installed WooCommerce plugin and you've set up your products and you have a WooCommerce running website in the backend. So I'm going to go with the product ID 36. Okay. And then uh, I'm already logged in over here. So remember that this mutation is going to be authenticated. So you need to be logged in for that. Now, since I'm already within the WordPress environment and I'm logged into my WordPress dashboard, so we, I don't need to pass any authentication token. However, if you do the same thing through a third party uh, application, or let's say you do it through Postman, then you need to uh, first authenticate yourselves, maybe using JWT approach, uh, get the auth token and pass the JWT into the authorization headers uh, along with the request and only then will this request get complete. Otherwise it won't because, because this is a mutation which is making a change for a user so it must be private. Okay, so since I'm already logged in here, uh, I can just hit play and notice what happens. It says Add to wish list and it says added equals true and client mutation ID example error is nothing product ID is 36 and currently the user has uh, this wish list product IDs as just 36 because that's what I've added right now and we're going to store this information in the user meta so I've added the product ID as 36 let's add another one let's go with 35 so I'm just going to change this to 35 and I'm going to hit it and there you go. You can see now I have got 36 and 35 both. And the one that's been added currently is the 35, the one in question. All right. And as you can see, this is the type is a root, root mutation. So this is a mutation. This is not a, a query. And if you try to add the same product again, you're going to get an error. So let's try that. There you go. You can see that it says product already exists. Added equals false, which means it has not added it because it already existed against that user. So inside of the wishlist product IDs. All right. So already have that. Brilliant. So uh, there will be mutation to delete as well. 
and we'll also register fields to write a query to get the wish list as well okay but let's start with this one first so how do we do that so we are into our custom plugin called headless cms and i'm inside of the mutations and i'm going to create i'm going to create a file over here and we'll call it class add wish list so this will contain our mutation wishlist.php and i'm going to go ahead and add some namespaces over here so i'm going to do a copy paste to save time so a namespace headless cms features um, and then includes so this is our include folder and then mutations so this is our mutation okay and then i'm using singleton approach there's already a video i've created on the singleton uh, so if you don't know what that is if you want to learn about it you can check out my advanced wordpress theme development course okay so let's create class and we'll name it as add wish list use singleton okay and then protected function underscore underscore construct and then we're going to do this and then we're going to create another function and we'll name it as setup hooks set up hooks this is where we will call our actions and i'm just going to call this function setup hooks okay then i'm going to do add action graphql register types and then we'll call our function which we'll create in a moment we'll call it as add wish list mutation okay and before even calling uh, before even registering this action uh, we should check if function if class exists WooCommerce because if WooCommerce doesn't exist then it doesn't make sense to go ahead and register uh, our fields right okay so in case if the plugin is not active then we don't want to go ahead and do anything all right so this is the function we're going to create uh, so I'm going to say public oops public function add wishlist mutation and inside of that I'm going to call a function and that function is called register graphql mutation this one okay and inside of this this is going to ask for the mutation name and so what is our mutation name our mutation name is going to be uh, add to wish list so this is our mutation name so let's go ahead and do that and then next parameter will be an array of options the first thing is going to take is the input fields so input fields and then inside of this is going to take so you can define your input fields like what all do you want to give as an input so i want to give product id by the way client mutation id is available by default as your inputs so you don't need to, you don't need to register that but you do need to register the product id because that's what you want to pass to let it know that which product needs to be added to the user's uh, meta okay so inside of this i need to register the type of it so what type is it so you can see that it's an integer so i'm going to say type equals integer and then you can put a description here so if you look at the docs then you'll be able to see as to what it is okay so product id headless cms okay okay so that's your input field now we also need to give it an output field so i'll say output fields so what do you want to get as a response that's what it needs to know so i'm just going to copy this so that I have to do less of typing and I can spend more time explaining. So I'll say added. Type will be Boolean. So see, th these are all of the output fields we need. So added, 
So I'm putting added and since this is boolean, true or false, right? This one. That's why I'm putting boolean over here, right? Description, <clears throat> true if the product is added, okay? False otherwise, all right? That's added and then the next thing we need is basically the um, product ID, which is this one, all right? And this is gonna be an integer and this is going to be the product ID that was uh, added or in question. Okay, the one that was passed. And then we also need to know the wish list product IDs. So let's copy this again. Comma. So next field will be wish list product IDs. And that's going to be uh, an array, right? Because this is an array. And so the type instead of integer is going to be a list of string okay because as you can see that this is an array and these are strings inside of them ideally this should have been integer but it's fine for now let's just keep it string but for your uh, need if you want to turn them into uh, an integer you can do that by changing this type to integer it's up to you okay uh, the last but not the least we need error as well so I'm going to before I copy that I just describe this over here the product IDs in the wish list okay and I'm going to copy this one again and this time it's going to be the error okay so type is going to be string and this will be the description of the error description of the error all right so it looks like we have our input fields. We also have our output fields. The last piece you will need will be the um, function that allows us to uh, do something and you know pass the data to these fields, right? So I'm just gonna minimize this one, input fields, output fields, and the last one will be called mutate and get payload. So this is going to pass payload to our output fields. So function, this is going to get the input. So whatever you pass as input in these fields, which is the product ID, it's going to be available inside of the input. It also has context. You're not going to use that, but I'm just letting you know it's available. And then we also have info. Okay. And inside of this, Let's prepare our response. So we'll say response equals an array. And that's going to be containing all of these output fields, which is added product ID, wish list, product ID is an error. So I'm going to use that. So be added. For now, let's set this to false. Then we have the product ID. So this is going to be the one you pass. So empty, if not empty, input product ID, then the value will be equal to the product ID, else it will just be zero. Let's just set that to zero, okay? Because then it's an integer, so it's expecting us to pass an integer value, all right? And then we need the products wishlist products ID. So we need the wishlist products ID. So this is going to be an array because we're saying that this is the list of the strings. And then finally, you have the error as well, which is actually the string. Okay. So as you've learned in the previous episodes that from the function, uh, which is basically a resolver, whatever you return in this case, uh, the response will be available to you uh, as the value of, of those fields. And you have to make sure the shape that we 
you know, write this needs to be the same as what you have defined for the output fields. All right. Okay. And uh, before we test it, we just need to call this class. So we need to instantiate this class basically. So we'll go up, go to a plugin. We'll go down at the bottom. And over here, we'll say mutations and then add wishlist, get instance, and that's it. And let's move this class exist over here and return in case if it is not available. Let's do that. Because otherwise our setup hook is not even doing anything. All right, so I've removed it from there and I put that here, all right? Now, let's go back and if I hit refresh, there you go, you can see that you've got add to wish list, right? And then if you hit play, you can see that this is a root, root mutation, uh, added as false, why? Because that's what we are returning from added. Uh, you've got the product ID, which is 35, because that's what you passed from the input. And I'm just picking that up from the input itself. So that's what's available as the product ID. Uh, wish this product ID is just an empty array because that's what we passed. And error is also empty because that's what we passed here. If I say um, some error here and just play it again, you can see that now it says some error, right? Awesome. So the job is half done. Uh, we have registered our successfully. So the job is half done. We have successfully registered our mutation. And all we have to do now is resolve this function uh, with the response after making the actual mutation into the WordPress database. Uh, so basically, you want to go ahead and take that product ID and uh, go ahead and insert that inside of the user meta. All right? Brilliant. So... I hope you did like the video and if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and uh, do start my repository to support my work like all the beautiful 27 people have and do follow me on Twitter and do follow me on Twitter my Twitter handle is Koditech and I'm gonna see you in the next video where we will continue further and we will develop the functionality for the wishlist. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.